These railroad tracks don't seem to have been used lately, but they run through Saluda. Nice little storefront public library. Polk County and the railroad station. And appropriately, they would have a little toy train here. The steepest standard gauge mainline railroad grade in the U.S. Opened in 1878, three miles long. Crest here in Saluda. Where the foothills end and the Blue Ridge begins. It was a crossroads called Paces Gap where drovers passed through hitting, herding livestock to ports in South Carolina. But once the first train came through on July 4th, 1878, the area came to life and by 1881 had been chartered as the town of Saluda, named for a Cherokee Indian chief whose name means Corn River. It manages the sounds of steam powered locomotives puffing up the steep grade with smoke spewing from its stacks as it blows its steam getting off the train or lowlanders from further south who are escaping the sweltering heat and the pesky mosquitoes. Among these are artists, writers, musicians retreating to the natural beauty of the Saluda Mountains for inspiration. There's Huffing and Puffing. Carolina Special. Main Street. Oh, I didn't finish. Retreating to the natural beauty of the Saluda Mountains for inspiration, cool breezes, and healthy mountain air. Town folks have parked their buggies, wagons, and motorized vehicles along the dirt covered Main Street. Farmers greet the trains to sell fresh produce to visitors and Saluda residences. Saluda became the home, summer home of many artistic people, hoping to hide away so they could paint, write, or just relax. The arts in Saluda started out as being functional potters, wool dyers, rug makers, and furniture makers. Saluda's art colony continues to flourish. Many are nationally acclaimed for their work and are celebrated annually. Steep streets. City Hall. Yeah, very practical here. And if Elvis was alive, he'd probably be driving one of these Cadillacs. Wow, it's a cool little downtown. Wow, this is an old general store and museum. Look at the chain gang. So we got checkers and the pot bellied stove. Tommy Scales. Home of Coon Dog Days. Wow. 
That's a claim to fame there. Uh, one way street going up the hill. I'm dropping down off the Blue Ridge Escarpment. On this crooked road, 176. This is certainly a crooked road. This would be the town of Tryon. It's right on the South Carolina line. Mm, it's not very big. I'm at Cowpens, South Carolina, and this is the memorial. For the render of Charleston, May 12, 1780. Battle of Kettle Creek, February 14, 1779. The Battle of Kings Mountain, October 7, 1780. The Battle of Cowpens. Join our side. The young country needs you. Secure and defend personal freedoms. Fight for the right to choose your leaders. Stop paying taxes in England. Defend your home against state and state against British occupation. On the other side, we have the British. Join our side. Defend your mother country. Help suppress this treasonous revolt. Protect your legal government. Fight for your king. Become a free man if you are a slave. New Morgan led the Americans. 1,000 militia men. These guys. And 500 continentals. These guys. To the army. Dagomore knew his men. The night before the battle, he moved among the militia. He called for courage, but did not ask the raw soldiers to face the British bayonet. These are the weapons. Flintlocks, the sharpshooter's rifle, and balls. Look at the size of the balls there. Oh, these are the sharpshooters. Horseman Saber. Small cannon, field cannon.
brown vests, nomenclature. That would be the musket. On the American side, you had the dragoon, <laughs> dragoons, dragoons. <laughs> Get it right in a minute. 150 mounted on horses. The militia, about a thousand. Many were from the local area. And interestingly enough, they had rifled weapons. Whereas the Continental soldiers, the professionals, Daniel's flying army, they had smoothbore muskets. The Loyalist Provincials were American colonists. They wore green jackets and fought in the British Army. Then you had the British, British regulars, Tarleton's men, rode the red jackets. On this field, on January 17, 1781, Daniel Morgan led his army to a brilliant victory over Bannister Tarleton's force of British regulars, one of only a few successful double envelopes in history. This battle was recognized by historians as one of the most important in the American Revolution. Surrender of Yorktown. October 19, 1781. Treaty of Paris, September 3, 1783.